In this video, we're going to take the time to install the Apache Tomcat web container. Now, this is a lightweight version of the full Apache server, and it works nicely across different operating systems. So this is going to be an installation video that does focus on Windows. However, if you have a Linux distribution or a Macintosh distribution, you should be able to very easily find a way to install the Apache Tomcat container on your server or on your machine as well. Now, I chose Apache Tomcat because when we do our programming for the web, we do need a web container, and we'll learn a little bit more about this in the future. But this gives us the ability to host web applications outside of the IDE, or the Integrated Development Environment. Now, we are going to be using Eclipse as our development environment, and we'll be using the Kepler version, which is the most recent version at the time of this recording. Because of that, we'll also be using Tomcat 7, which is the one that plays very nicely with the Eclipse Kepler version. You can see there's already a Tomcat 8 in development. So at the time of your taking this course, you may actually do a little bit of research and determine that Tomcat 8 with the newest version of Eclipse, if it's no longer Kepler, would be a better path to take, and that's fine. The version numbers are not as important, of course, as making sure that your systems play well together, and the concepts are going to translate across the two, so it won't be a big deal. There is another option available to you if you choose that you don't, for whatever reason, want to use Tomcat. What you could do is use the default version that comes with both the Java EE download and the NetBeans download, which is called Glassfish. And it's a server that does do web container stuff as well. So we can do our programming that we'll see in this course using NetBeans and the Glassfish server. So if you choose to do that, you could go to netbeans.org, download the full NetBeans EE version that includes Glassfish. But you would need to do some configuration or changes that may not be quite covered in this course. So that will be on you if you choose to go that path. But if you are more familiar with NetBeans, that may be a good decision. With that, we are going to continue with a Tomcat installation here. So once again, I am using Tomcat 7 for this course. It plays nicely with Java Eclipse Kepler version. And I am on Windows, so I'm going to get the Windows Service Installer, which is a very easy way to configure my machine here in Windows. Again, if you're on a different platform, Ubuntu or some other Linux distribution, you should be able to find an easy command to get an Apache container working on your machine. Once this download completes, we'll just click on it and start the installation process. It does take just a moment to finalize its download here. And now that's completed, so I'm going to go ahead and start the installation. And it asks for permission. I'm going to say yes. And it gives me some information about what the setup's going to do. And then it asks me to read through the license agreement, which I'm happy to do. And then we have some configuration options. The first thing we want to do with Windows is we want to make sure that our Tomcat service starts up every time we reboot our machine. So we're going to leave that. And the native DLL is basically there for us for production environments. So we're not in a production environment, so we're going to leave that alone. And the other thing I'm going to recommend is to install the examples. The examples will give us some code that already is pre-built and will run right away on our server so we can see it working. The host manager, we could install that. This is more for if you're going to be setting up multiple hosts, which we're not going to be doing, so we don't need it. And we can go ahead and skip through that. The next part is the configuration. So you'll note that this is the most important number here. This 8080 is going to be our HTTP connector port. That's what we're going to use when we communicate with our web server outside of the IDE that we're developing in. You might know this and you might not, so if you don't, I just want to explain. Port 80 is the common port for web browser traffic from any web host. And so 8080 is just doubling that, so it's a real easy number to remember, and it's very common that you would use 8080 as your default port for your web server on a local machine. So if you already have another one installed, such as the Glassfish server, you may already be using port 8080 for that. If you are, you can change this number, you just need to remember it. I don't have anything else installed on my machine as far as a web server goes, so I'm going to leave 8080 as my default port. And I'm also going to leave my Windows service name alone as Tomcat 7. You could change that if you so desire. That's just showing up in your Windows services. My administrator, I'm just going to call it Tomcat Admin, and I'm going to give it one of my favorite passwords so I can easily remember it. And then I'm going to go ahead and select Next, and it will say, where is your JRE? Of course, ours is installed there. And then it will install to the Apache Software Foundation folder that it will create and Tomcat 7.0. And again, if you're on a different version, you might see a different number there. That's not a big deal. And of course, it tells you how much space is required and available. So it will take just a moment for all this installation and configuration to complete. And so we'll just sit here and wait for this because it isn't very long. And again, once this completes, we'll just see a simple screen that allows us to run the Apache server or view the readme. We don't need to see the readme. We'll just go ahead and start up our service, and this will start the service on our Windows machine 
and attempt to start it. If there's an error, it would show up, but we don't have an error. And now we can go ahead and view to make sure that our server was installed correctly. So to do that, we just communicate with it through the browser at HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8080. Now, again, if you changed your port number for some reason, you would need to change that there. And you can see that once this is up and running correctly, this does show the Apache Tomcat page. And this does have a nice little landing page built for us that has some information. We can look through some documentation if we want to see that. There's some configuration things. Most importantly, if you installed the examples, you can go and browse through the examples and you can see stuff working right away. You can view the source or you can execute it. So if you execute it, it does show that that servlet is working and you can see some other things there or you can see the source and that will show you the hello world source that was used to generate that servlet. So once again, by installing the examples, we already have some stuff in place and we've verified that our server is up or our container is up and running. Now we can just browse to our location just so we can see what's going on behind the scenes. In our program files x86 directory, our Apache Software Foundation Tomcat 7, you'll see that there are a bunch of folders. Bin, conf, lib, logs, temp, web apps, work, and some files. The one that we care the most about at this point is web apps. That's where our web container is going to host our different applications. So we'll be putting our deployments out here. And we have our documentations, which you saw when we clicked on documents, it let us go there. We have our examples, which we saw when we clicked on servlets, hello world. And again, you could easily click on that and see the source code for it. And that was the same one that we just saw. So you can see that everything is in place and we're good to go. Our Tomcat 7 server is up and running and we are ready for the next steps.